Hi, my name is Ray Malik, and today we're gonna to be looking at the three qualities that make up the one guitar that I think every beginner should start off with. Now, if you've been playing for a number of years, you're just more advanced, I think this is the one guitar that you need to add to the rest of your rig if you don't own one already. So I've been a guitarist for close to 15 years at this point. I used to be the lead guitarist of this band called Fear Control. I even taught a lot of people back in the day. So I've met a lot of people who've started and then kind of stopped playing. And the one thing I've noticed, and I'm sure a lot of other musicians have as well, is that you know people will pick up the instrument and they'll play for six to 12 months. And very few will continue to get better from that point. But a lot of people will just kind of drop off and lose passion or just lose interest for the instrument. It's super hard to learn a new instrument. And in the first six to 12 months on guitar are kind of grueling and you don't make a lot of progress and you feel like you're maybe even going backwards sometimes. And you kind of shoot yourself in the foot by making it even more difficult by picking the wrong guitar to start with. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing you should look for in your first guitar is that it should be an acoustic. I know this is a little bit controversial and people will groan at it, but trust me, as a heavy metal guitarist, your first guitar should be an acoustic and there are a hundred million reasons why. When you are first starting to play, you need easy access to that instrument. An acoustic gives you that. There is almost no barrier to entry other than owning the instrument. You know, there's no amp you need to have. You need to get headphones if you're trying to play quietly. You don't need the cables for the amp. And you don't need to do all of that setup when playing an acoustic. You know, the only thing you have to do is maybe get it out of the case. And if you use a pick, just find your pick. That's probably in the case or in the guitar. And you're good to go. You're done. You're ready to play. With the electric, it's just a lot different. You have to do all the setup and then you have to start playing. And that barrier when you're starting off may not seem like a lot now, but it can add up and all of a sudden it's just collecting dust instead of getting played. And so the other thing with acoustics is that they really allow you to develop your fundamentals better versus having started off with an electric, in my opinion. And the reason is because with an acoustic, you know, you're really gonna have to have great technique to pull off bar chords, other complicated chords, uh, hammer-ons, pull-offs, um, and slides and stuff like that. With an electric, it's just a lot easier. And so, you know, you could half-ass a bar chord or a complicated chord, and you can play a lot faster, and you can do all these things, but it's not gonna allow you to focus on technique enough in the first six to 12 months. And so if you ever go from an electric to an acoustic, it's gonna feel like hell on earth. Versus if you go from an acoustic to an electric, you're gonna feel like Jimi Hendrix or Van Halen, and you're just gonna be flying through that. And that's because you, you'll have developed great fundamentals, great finger, finger strength, and, and, and really great technique as well. And so an acoustic is gonna allow you to do that. So trust me, start off with the acoustic, it's gonna help you build your fundamentals. So the second thing you should look for in your acoustic guitar is the string type. You've basically got two choices. You've got steel or nylon. And I would suggest starting off with the steel string guitar. Now, which string type you go with is kind of purely based on personal preference and flexibility. Now, with nylon strings, you're gonna get that very typical classical or flamenco-ish sound. And if you're into finger style or finger picking or playing classical guitar, actually go, go into getting a nylon string guitar. Um, it's gonna sound a lot better and nicer to you. The reason I say steel strings is because it's just gonna allow you more flexibility. You can still play classical guitar, you can still play finger style, you can still strum along, you can play folk, indie, or other acoustic hits, and they're all just gonna sound fine. And so it just it's gonna allow you more flexibility. With nylon, it's not that you're stuck with playing one style, it's that you're gonna get that one tone very, very, very consistently and you're not gonna be able to have the other flexible sounds that you would get from steel strings. Now, steel strings have their own acoustic signature, their own tone. I just firmly believe that it's more flexible in allowing you to be in other genres. The other thing with nylon is actually, it's a little bit easier to play on nylon strings. So I'm kind of contradicting myself from the beginning of the video. It is a little bit easier to play on nylon strings. They're not steel, they won't, you know, uh, be as tough on your fingers, for example. I actually started off on nylon strings. So when I went from nylon to acoustic, I had to develop better 
uh, calluses and finger strength in order to play the same things I was playing on nylon. I still lean towards getting the steel because of that flexibility. The other thing about nylon guitars is that they're typically meant for classical guitar playing. And so that means the frets are much, much wider on a nylon acoustic guitar versus a steel string. Now, if you're someone with big hands, like a football player or something, I'm not, I've just got average size hands, I guess. Um, nylon strings may be easier for you because you'll be able to fit your fingers onto the fretboard easier without it feeling like super cramped or whatnot. Um, otherwise, if you've got small to average hands, then you know getting a steel string acoustic guitar will feel more at home because the frets are not that wide apart and you'll be able to fit everything without being cramped. The third and most important thing to look for in your next or first guitar is the body type. And that body type should be a parlor type guitar. But what are parlor guitars? They're essentially a small bodied acoustic guitar that was super popular in the 1800s. And they kind of sit midway between a nylon string guitar and a full bodied steel string acoustic guitar. And they were kind of designed so that any family member could just pick up the guitar and start playing and feel comfortable with it, not just the men of the household. And that's what kind of made them so popular back in the day. Traditionally, they were really seen as like this folk or indie type of guitar, but they're more of a boutique instrument that just allowed everyone to really play guitar and feel comfortable using them. And back in the day when they were really popular, you would see musicians playing this instrument in smaller parlor establishments, hence the name parlor guitar. Let's pause for a second. I've been around guitars forever, so when I made this video, I kind of just glossed over what it means to be a parlor-sized guitar. So I wanna go into a little bit more detail now. Parlor-sized guitars can cover a few types of guitars, actually. Let's look at a real-life example. This is a diagram of acoustic body types for Martin guitars. As you can see in this diagram, all the way to the right, we've got the traditional classic parlor guitar body. However, thanks to the way we make guitars and manufacture them nowadays, we've got a lot more body shapes and sizes to play with. So when I state get a parlor size guitar, I'm actually referring to these guitars as well. And that's really true for a lot of guitarists and guitar shop owners. In modern day, we refer to guitars that are smaller than the traditional orchestra sized guitar as parlor sized. Let's look at another example. I happen to own two Taylor acoustics. One is a grand auditorium and the other is a grand theater. Now, just based off their names, you can't really tell if any of them are parlor sized. Now, funny enough, this Grand Auditorium guitar is actually slightly smaller than Martin's description of a Grand Auditorium. It's actually a little bit closer to the orchestra sized. Now, this Grand Theater here, however, is a parlor sized guitar. It's just Taylor's analog for a parlor sized guitar. So if you want a parlor sized guitar from Taylor, look at their Grand Theater or GS Mini guitars. By the way, this guitar just came out in 2020 and I will be reviewing it soon. It is a fantastic parlor size guitar. Now it's kind of hard to show off the fact that this grand auditorium is much bigger than the parlor size guitar on video. It also doesn't help that I'm just a tall skinny guy. So your point of reference is just all out of whack. If we overlap the videos a bit, you can see there's a clear size difference. Just know that in real life, this size difference is shocking. The parlor guitar is just a lot smaller and skinnier. A lot of people will just refer to it as like a mini guitar. Now, how can you know if a guitar is parlor sized? Well, number one, when you see it in person, you will know. It is clear as night and day. Parlor guitars are just significantly smaller. It's hard to show off in a video here because I've got a Taylor Auditorium guitar that is just barely on the cusp of not being a parlor guitar. Number two, buy your guitars from a physical guitar shop. Guitar Center is completely fine. I, I buy tons of guitars from there. Just make sure to ask someone to point out a parlor size guitar and there you're done. Okay, back to the video. Over time, acoustic guitars just kept getting bigger and bigger until almost every musician you saw was playing a dreadnought sized acoustic guitar and parlors just weren't as popular. But recently, they've really come back into vogue and for good reason. A parlor guitar is a guitarist guitar, if you know what I mean. They're the guitar we pick up when you just want to noodle around which is fantastic because that allows for unconscious music creation and practicing. There are many reasons why I'm a fan of parlor guitars. First of all, they're extremely easy to play, they're very comfortable to hold, and they're almost weightless. They're very responsive to fast, intricate, or complex finger picking patterns, and it, it, can just, it just kind of feels effortless the whole time. Now, despite their small size, they still pack an amazing amount of sound. 
Guitars are traditionally a mid-range instrument, but parlor guitars have a crystal clear high end and their low end is never muddy. Thanks to the way guitars are made in modern day, you can still get a great amount of volume out of them relative to a dreadnought guitar, and you'll be surprised how loud they can really get. Generally, but not always true, parlor guitars tend to have smaller necks and fret widths, so that makes getting to the notes you wanna play or some complex chords just feel a little bit more effortless. Now, even though they're small, that doesn't mean they're a toy or a child's instrument. Like any instrument, there's cheap versions of them, but the high-end ones can go all the way up to 10,000, for example. I don't recommend you get a $10,000 guitar, but you know, look around the three or $500 range. Th there are many big names that have used parlor guitars. Some of the ones that just come to mind are uh, Bob Dylan, Tommy Manuel, John Mayer, Mark Orton. I think even uh, astronaut Chris Hatfield used one in space recently. In the end, parlor guitars just let you do all the proper techniques just a little bit more comfortably. And that's what you need as a beginner or even a more advanced guitar player. If you can, don't do yourself a disservice by starting off with a dreadnought style acoustic guitar. I can't tell you how many students or guitarists I've seen just struggle to play the instrument properly because they're just having a harder time with the dreadnought style acoustic. And if you're someone who's kind of lost passion for the guitar, trust me, a parlor guitar is just so fun to play. It's gonna give you that passion and confidence back. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and share with anyone who you think is gonna be buying a new guitar, either for themselves or for someone else. And let me know what you think about parlor guitars in the comments below. Make sure to sub as well, because I'm gonna have a lot more amazing content coming out this year.